Hi, this is Nicole Denevere. Um, I was asked by 13 Forest to make a little video. Um, so the first thing was um, how or why I'm an artist. Um, I think probably that goes to my mom being an artist. Um, probably having a parent that's within a field like art, you kind of see what the possibilities are and you're more likely to do it yourself. But I think that was definitely what I did. Um, but, and also it's, I think to a certain degree, it's always come naturally to me more than anything else, more than office work. So, although I do do that too. So, um, that's something that, and you know, making art, I think is something that's always been in my life and probably always will be. Um, and so I'm going to go into what I've been doing during the epidemic. Um, so um, I've been working from home. Um, I have an office job at the Chamber of Commerce and uh, I'm going through a series of little tiny paintings I've been making um, on my free time while I'm, uh, while I'm at home. So this is the first one. Uh, I think I called it Pheasant, Pheasant Burst and Peony. I actually started working on it uh, basing it off of a painting of kittens playing. <laughs> I think I kind of borrowed the whole green background from that painting and then started kind of just painting fur everywhere as the basis for it and then kind of elaborated on that. I've been looking at a lot of uh, my still life books while I've been in the studio and um, been kind of working from those, taking elements from the kind of Dutch still life that everyone's familiar with. Um, this one I called Pheasant Burst because I had a painting that I think I made about 10 years ago. And I think a lot of this series is kind of going back to artwork that I made before and kind of seeing if there was any ideas there that I should go back to and explore. Um, but I think this one's interesting. It's got a nice background color anyways. So this is the second painting in that series. Um, this one is based off of Abraham Mignon's, um, his grotto series, which all seems to be like plant life growing in a cave. And then there's like a little, all his work seems to move from right to left. And, and this one, and almost all of them, the grotto opening is on the left hand. And so that's something I was kind of playing with. I felt like the scale of this was so small. It was hard to kind of play with the elements of kind of biomorphic work that I tend to do. And I feel like it kind of ended up being more of like a typical uh, forest still life. But I still really like it. I, I think... It's a good exploration for me. Um, I've been like, I really like doing clouds lately. So that was a nice, nice thing to put in there. This is the third painting in that series. Um, this one's called um, Up on Fur Mound. <laughs> um, this one, um, um, I think I started working on this in a way that I used to paint quite a lot more, where I would just kind of make shapes in the underpainting and slowly flesh them out over time. Uh, this painting ended up kind of just being, I feel like it's a lot of typical sexual references from early, from Dutch still lifes and almost as if they're all kind of just scrunched together and pushed into a corner. Um, I feel like I even just added oysters and I wasn't even thinking about it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's one of those references too. Um, but uh, yeah, I've always wanted to do curtains, like the trompe l'oeil curtains. So these, uh, this series of small paintings is a, like a fun way to put in all the things that I thought were like, I don't know, a little too on the nose for my work and just kind of going for it. But I think uh, maybe in the future I'll end up doing something like this. Um, Here's the fourth painting. Um, this one I think I just called Set Table with Fishes. Um, more curtains, because I really been wanting to do that. Um, this painting I made 
everything but the fishes and had it sitting around for a few days and I felt like it was very um such a grim painting and then I made it even more grim but um I loved I love the paintings where the glassware is just a bunch of scattered dots in the background so I've always wanted to explore that more and I just put that in the in the background just to see if it would look right and I think it sort of does and I'll have to explore that further um and then again building up just kind of shapes out of nowhere kind of became this kind of brain-like shape in the background and then I just painted the fishes this morning um I just love a translucent just sloppy fish just love love painting something like that it's uh the ones that I was working from are from another Ming Nam painting, and um, they have these just orange orange guts just like pouring out of them, and I just think they're so beautiful. Um, and so I wanted to put that in my painting as well. Um, I didn't make them strung up to the ceiling, but it feels like most of them are all kind of hanging in bunches. These ones are just kind of they're like they've all slid together and sort of ruined the the curtains that someone has laid out carefully. So the last two are the couple of votive paintings. Um, I've been wanting, I have this extreme blackout paint and I've been wanting to use it for a while. Um, and I always like the idea of this kind of little precious votive being in the center of uh, this extreme blackness. Um, I also just love doing uh, a simple grape painting. Um, uh, this is also based off of another Mignon painting with just these hanging trans translucent grapes and I um, just wanted to have a little opportunity to do something. I think it's a little indulgent but um, I love painting grapes any chance that I get. And this is the last one, um, also a votive painting. It's um, kind of based off of a Van Hoosman print that I have in my studio. Um, I love his paintings as I always have these kind of wild elements where there's just a straw, like a single straw that's kind of laid over the whole composition. I feel like that's something I'm working towards in my work. Um, also kind of building up backgrounds and kind of a dynamic between light and dark. Um, but yeah, that's the last one in the series. Thanks for listening to me.